Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. So I've been making these softlock videos for quite a while now. Since the very beginning though, I've often been asked about a certain location in the Pokemon universe, Cerulean City. Cerulean City is a very unique place that just so happens to have several things that can be used to trap the player. For starters, when you first arrive at the city, you have to fall down a ledge. This is a one-way road and the player is unable to go back or leave the general area until they advance the story a bit. Inside Cerulean, the exit to the south is blocked by both an NPC and a small tree. To the west, there is a house that is blocked off by another NPC. This character doesn't move aside until the player meets Bill at the Cape. In order to reach Bill, the player must travel north across a bridge. However, there is a forced encounter with a rival here, and he must be defeated before you can continue. With things arranged as they are, all you have to do is figure out a way to make this rival battle unwinnable, and then your entire save file is stuck. A big reason that Cerulean City gets brought up a lot to me is because technically, many of the previous topics I've covered could easily apply here too. You could just release all of your Pokemon and leave yourself with something weak like a Magikarp that can't battle. Or you could go with something like Electrode who has had all of its moves deleted except for self-destruct. Because of how early in the game Cerulean City is, the player has very little resources to work with. They can't even get the first HM yet. With the right Pokemon, escape seems like it could be more or less impossible. This is especially the case in Fire Red and Leaf Green. In those games, as long as the player has only a single Pokemon, they're unable to trade with another cartridge. And that brings us to the topic of today's video. Since Cerulean City has the potential to be used in so many different softlocks, I wanted to see if I could come up with something unique that can only be done here. And after a bit of time planning this, I think I've managed to do exactly that. And get ready everyone, because I'm going to show you one of the most evil save files that I've ever created. And for this one, I'll be playing on Fire Red version. So first of all, I need to show you how to set it up. I've covered these basic steps so many times on the channel before, so let's try to get through this quickly. Obviously, you first need to play a new game normally until you reach Cerulean City. Once you've reached the bottom of that ledge, the real fun will start. First, pick up all of the hidden items within the city. Next, you need to defeat Misty. This will ensure that the only possible trainer battle will be from the rival encounter to the north. Now, like in every other video, it's time to throw away all of your money and items. This is so the player will be unable to buy or sell anything once the setup is complete. For the next step, you'll need to trade to get a shiny Poliwhirl on this cartridge. However, for this to work, its moves must be Hail, Substitute, and Belly Drum. The PP for Hail must also be maxed out. Yes, I am serious. Just bear with me. You'll see why we need something this specific later on. And finally, you need to release all of the Pokemon on this save file, except for that shiny Poliwhirl. Since this is Gen 3, trading with other games will become unavailable. You are not allowed to do this unless you own at least two Pokemon. And with that, once we save the game, the setup will be complete. So let's take a closer look and see why this game has become unplayable. As we've established earlier, it's now impossible to go backwards in the game, and the only way forward is to go through the rival at the bridge. However, with our Poliwhirl's current moves, this battle isn't possible anymore. Each of these three moves will cost Poliwhirl HP to use. Belly Drum requires half of the user's max HP, and Substitute requires a quarter. And while Hail doesn't technically cost HP to use, there is no way to avoid taking damage from the weather effect once it's used. Hail will damage Poliwhirl for a sixteenth of its max HP. If you try to use Substitute first, you'll also find that Poliwhirl will still take weather damage even if the Substitute is still active. No matter what kind of combination of moves you try to use here, Poliwhirl cannot defeat the rival's first Pokémon. You won't be able to do anything except make it easier for Poliwhirl to be defeated. And of course, when you lose the battle, you'll be sent back to the last Pokémon Center, which in this case should be Cerulean City. So since Poliwhirl can't battle with these moves, we have to consider the next option, using Struggle. In order to use Struggle, we're going to need to use up all of Poliwhirl's PP. Aside from the rival though, the only place we can battle at is this patch of grass next to the ledge. Here's the thing though, with how things have been set up, it should now be impossible for Poliwhirl to use up its moves without fainting first. If it can't pay the HP cost for Belly Drum or Substitute, then the moves will simply fail, while still costing a single power point. In the case of Hail, though, Poliwhirl will still take the damage regardless. 
So logically, you would think that if you used up all of Hail first, you could then waste Substitute and Belly Drum by having them fail over and over. However, you need to remember a few things about Hail. The first is that there is no way for the move to possibly miss or even fail under the current circumstances. Poliwhirl is guaranteed to lose a 16th of its max health every time it uses the move. This damage cannot be avoided. The second thing to remember is that this Poliwhirl has had its PP for Hail maxed out as a part of this. And what is the maximum number of uses you can extend Hail to? 16. The next thing you need to know is how the damage is actually applied to Poliwhirl. So let's say as an example that we're using the Wild Encounters in the most optimal way possible. We're going to manually save between every encounter, making sure that the only damage we take comes from using Hail, and not from any enemy attacks. In this situation, the level 43 Poliwhirl with 111 HP will always be left with 15 HP after using all 16 Hails. Why is it not KO'd by this point? Because of a weird quirk with how the game calculates damage. 111 divided by 16 is 6.9375. Curiously, the game does not round this up to 7. Every time Hail is used, Poliwhirl will always take exactly 6 points of damage. The result of this is that the Pokémon is left with a little extra HP at the end. 15 HP isn't much, but it is enough to use Struggle, and also gain experience from wild Pokémon. It's just enough for Poliwhirl to stay standing after the recoil damage. Don't get too excited though, if you think you can take advantage of this to level up Poliwhirl until it learns an attack, you're very mistaken. True, it's possible to reach level 44 by doing this enough times, but that's as far as you'll ever go. With this specific Poliwhirl stats, its HP at level 44 will always be 113. Keep in mind that none of the wild Pokémon available are able to give HP effort values, so nothing can be done to influence the stat's growth. 113 divided by 16 is 7.0625. So now, Hail will be dealing 7 points of damage every time it's used. After its 16 uses, Poliwhirl will always be left with only a single hit point, and with that, it becomes impossible to gain any more experience because Struggle's recoil will now be too much. The situation is very similar to being stuck with a Pokémon that can only self-destruct. Except in this case, it's a lot slower. The player cannot advance forward and is stuck forever in this town. There is nothing this Pokémon can do without KOing itself in the process. This poor Poliwhirl is cursed to eternally have a storm cloud above its head, constantly pelting it with ice. What's even more ironic is the fact that its ability is damp, which is supposed to stop self-destructing moves from happening. And if you think this trap isn't already bad enough, don't worry, because it's about to get even worse. You see, there is actually one thing you can do to escape this place. I'm sure many of you have already figured this out and are dreading what I'm about to say next. In Cerulean City, there is an NPC that wants to trade with the player. He's offering a Jinx in exchange for a Poliwhirl. Now, you might think that this trade is inaccessible, since Poliwhirl is the player's only Pokémon. However, as it turns out, the rule of requiring two is ignored for the trades with NPCs. At this level, the traded Jinx would know Ice Punch and Double Slap, which would easily let you continue the save file with no problems whatsoever. The issue here though is that you need to give up a shiny Pokémon to pull up the escape. While it is possible to do this trade beforehand in order to make this a true lock, I think that leaving it like this is a lot more sinister. Imagine giving this cartridge to someone, telling them if they can have the free shiny Poliwhirl. Then imagine the look on their face as they realize that they can't escape from here without first giving it away. This lock is like a treasure chest where the treasure disappears as soon as you try to take it out. It's a completely guaranteed escape method that requires no random chance at all, but you have to give up one of Pokémon's rarest rewards in the process. To some Pokémon fans, this might not be a big deal at all, but to others, this would be their worst nightmare. You also have to question if this game is even worth saving this way. Once Poliwhirl is gone, you're left with a save file that's made very little progress. Going through with the trade is almost the same as giving up and starting a new game. Either way, that shiny Pokémon is gone forever. Some of you might be thinking though, well, what if I just reset until the Jinx becomes shiny too? However, that will not work either. There are many things about this Jinx that are already predetermined, including its nature and trainer ID. No matter how many times you reset, this Jinx will never become shiny. 
From what I understand, this is how in-game trades work in Fire Red and Leaf Green. In other games, though, such as Pokemon Let's Go, the NPC trades do have a chance of resulting in shiny Pokemon. And there you have it, everybody. A cruel, specific save file that can only exist in Cerulean City. Although the escape for this one isn't the most elaborate thing I've ever talked about, I couldn't pass up the chance to cover it once I realized that it was possible. Some people really love their shiny Pokémon. I still see comments upset that I released one in a previous video. So what better way to make everyone happy than to make a save file where they have to do it themselves, too? My name is Picasprey, and thanks for watching.